Thank you all for being here this afternoon. Today is about Brandon Caserta and his legacy. I cannot imagine what Terry and Patrick experienced nearly three years ago, but I've had the chance in the last few years to get a sense of their strength. Every American, especially our heroes in uniform, deserves mental health support at work. Brandon deserved that, but we let him down. We are here today because Terry and Patrick Caserta refuse to accept that American service members have to settle for the failed system that's supposed to get them mental health help. By passing this bill, Congress can empower service members to quickly get help in an emergency as soon as they confide in someone that they need it. They would simply have to say, I have a Brandon Act concern. If this were the case for Brandon, he would still be alive today. So I am proud to stand with his mom, Terry, his dad, Patrick, and my colleagues to reintroduce the Brandon Act. We're doing this because Terry and Patrick are fierce advocates, and because of them, I am hopeful that no other parents of service members have to experience what they have gone through. We came so close to getting this done last Congress. We got it into the House version of the NDAA, the Annual Defense Bill, but it was stripped out during conference. So we're back here again with the help of the Senate demanding that Congress pass the Brandon Act. And there is no more urgent time. The suicide rate in the military has increased by more than 13% from 2019 to 2020. We have to act, and I'm more optimistic than ever that we can get this done because of the group that we have today. My friend Senator Mark Kelly, who also brought Senator Kevin Kramer on board, and Representatives Marionette Miller-Meeks and Debbie Mlesko. The bill has support that transcends politics. Just this morning, the Air Force Chief of Staff, General Brown, committed to supporting the Brandon Act in our hearing. It's the right thing to do. It's Brandon Caserta's legacy, and it's up to us to get it done. I am now privileged and honored to introduce Terry and Patrick Caserta. Hello. I, first, I'd like to thank um, Congressman Moulton, Congressman Woman Miller, Meeks, Congresswoman Lesko, Congresswoman Norton, and Senator Kramer, and Senator Kelly, of course, and Senator Morrell for helping us and co-sponsoring the Brandon Act. We appreciate it, and they helped us get to this point. Um, Today is a great day for our nation and service members. The Brandon Act will save service members' lives. It's a verbal 911, but more importantly, it keeps our service members alive while they navigate through obstacles and roadblocks that are put before them. And it's a life-saving tool. Brandon had a smile that made everyone want to smile. He had magic. Johnson's smile. Uh, he cared about everyone and always was there for them. It's easier to change laws than it is to change ideas and habits. The goal of fairness can be established in the law. And everything happens for a reason. The challenge is finding that reason. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the Brandon Act is our current and future service members and to prevent others from having to go through what Brandon did and having and have continued to this day. There's a campaign that the Brandon Act is bundled up with. There are three other acts. It's an SOS campaign. It's called Save Our Service Members. LULAC is sponsoring that, and I just realized I forgot to thank them also. Um, they uh, really believe in helping service members, and they have for hundreds of years. And 
But I wanted to be the first one to send out an SOS to all 350 million Americans right here, right now, to help us save our service members. Please support the Brand Act. It is truly a matter of life and death. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, you know, first I want to thank Terry and Patrick Caserta for being here today. This is incredibly important. Your unwavering courage and commitment to carrying on your son's legacy is inspiring. Uh, I spoke with both Terry and Patrick earlier today. Uh, and over the past few months, and we talked about grief and tragedy, uh, tragedy of a life taken too soon. But we also talked about the promise, uh, the promise of the bill that we are introducing today and how their son, Brandon's legacy, will be one of saving lives. This is a mission that cannot wait. I also want to thank Representatives Moulton and Lesko and Miller Meeks and my colleagues uh, in the Senate, Senator Kramer and Senator Durbin, who could not be here, but who join us in support of this bipartisan legislation. My 25 years in the United States Navy taught me that the real strength of our military, the thing that matters the most and the thing that sets us apart it's not the aircraft carriers, it's not the airplanes, it's not the ships, it is our people. That means our continued success depends on supporting our people, giving them the tools that they need to do their jobs and having their backs, especially when times are challenging and especially when it matters the most. Tragically, this system failed Brandon and countless others who did not receive the mental health assistance that they sought and they needed. Brandon's death was one of 68, 68 active duty Navy suicides in 2018, just in the United States Navy. Those are not just numbers to me. Those are loved ones, people's family, and friends, and they're our people. And this is a problem that's shared by all of the services. It's not unique to the United States Navy. That's why I am introducing the Brandon Act in honor of Brandon and countless others who have the courage to seek mental health help, something we should provide to every single service member who puts their life on the line for our country. With the help of Brandon's brave parents and bipartisan support in Congress, this important legislation will, not could, will save the lives of other young service members, enabling them to seek care without fear of retaliation for doing so. It is the right thing to do. We owe it to our service members and to Brandon to address this issue head on. While we can't get Brandon back, we can honor his legacy, we can honor his service, and prevent tragic losses like these from ever happening again. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Representative Moulton and Lesko, and Senator Kelly, and also Senator Kramer, who is not here, and most importantly, Brandon's parents, Terry and Patrick Caserta, for being here. Unfortunate and heartbreaking that bullying and abuse in Brandon's squadron led to his suicide. And according to the most recent figures, suicide by service members rose to 571 in 2020, which is a 13.5% increase from 503 in 2019. As we have learned from the COVID pandemic, brain health or mental health care is extremely important. And we must ensure that those who risk their lives for our country have the ability to get care when needed and without undue burden. 
This bill can help prevent death by suicide for service members by providing a confidential channel for service members to self-report mental health issues and help remove stigma from seeking mental health services, which protects their privacy. And as a 24-year military veteran, I could not agree more with this bill. A restricted reporting process for mental health issues would allow service members to confidentially self-report mental health issues and receive access to a mental health evaluation and appropriate care without notifying command or law enforcement officials. And it ensures that men and women in uniform can admit that they are struggling and they can ask for help without the risk of retaliation. Some people live 100 years and will not have the impact that Brandon has had in his short life. And I know that famous smile of Brandon's is looking down upon us today and smiling as his parents have had the tenacity to see the Brandon Act through. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. I'm U.S. Congresswoman Debbie Lesko from Arizona's 8th Congressional District, and I am proud to represent Brandon's parents, Terry and Patrick Caserta from Peoria, Arizona, my hometown, in my district, and join them here today for the introduction of the Brandon Act in honor of their son, fallen U.S. Navy Petty Officer, third class, Brandon Caserta. My heartfelt sympathies go out to you for your loss. It has been my privilege to work with the Casertas and my colleagues, Representative Moulton and Miller Meeks and Senator Mark Kelly on this important legislation. We must ensure that our service members have access to mental health services without fear of persecution or retaliation. We need to do our part to make sure that what happened to Brandon does not happen again to another service officer. If people need help, they deserve to get it. I'm hopeful that this bipartisan legislation will get passed this Congress, and I look forward to working with all of my colleagues behind me and over in the U.S. Capitol to get this across the finish line this time. We're going to do it. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Cindy Benavides, and I serve as a Chief Executive Officer of the League of United Latin American Citizens, LULAC. For over 92 years, my organization has a commitment to civil rights in advancing the mutual interests and concerns of our Hispanic community, while providing our best efforts to secure an America to provide for all American civil rights, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, or creed. LULAC also recognizes that our sons and daughters entrusted to the U.S. military services must have proper care and support from responsible leadership that will take care of their invisible wounds to prevent loss of life, like the tragic loss of Navy Petty Officer 3rd Class Brandon Caserta. We all share in the grief of Terry and Patrick. Thankfully, Terry and Patrick have continued to fight for Brandon and others who face the same challenges in the military. And we thank you, Terry and Patrick. LULAC stands with you and all families in the care, safety, and protection of our sons and daughters that we send to protect us all. Today, we stand with Brandon and the hundreds of soldiers that we have lost. We stand with their families who may still be grieving and will forever grieve their loss. We must save our service members and the Brandon Act complement other legislation decide to hold accountable the military institutions and their leadership for active duty personnel. Today, I rise and LULAC rises 
to support Terry and Patrick and posthumously their son, Brandon. A family should never have to experience the pain of losing a loved one and the expected care and protection of the U.S. Navy and by extension of all military services. Today marks the reintroduction of a law that we all need as families to secure a guarantee that all of our sons and daughters will be provided the care they are entitled to and their service to our nation. We believe that Brandon would have been saved if he were able to get the help while he was being bullied at the hands of toxic leadership. Bullying, hazing, sexual harassment, and sexual assault are anathema to the work environments anywhere in America, and especially in the work environments in the U.S. military. The Brandon Act will self save lives by providing a safe phrase that will identify distress that requires a confidential and immediate mental health evaluation to provide treatment without retaliation for seeking help. Accountability is another dimension of the Brandon Act. This will help make sure individuals will be called to account for their behavior. And in the case of leadership, hold them accountable for the culture and climate they create. Trust and teamwork are bedrock principles of military service. Any deployment to hostile areas in the world depends on them. It is not too much to expect these same principles to be practiced on a U.S. military base or on a U.S. ship. Trust is developed and teamwork is practiced. The Brandon Act helps to support both. Trust that help is only a phrase away. Teamwork that same readiness imperative realized through training and policy for success on the battlefield is brought to bear in saving lives. Suicide is a military readiness issue and so is the Brandon Act. Today is a call to action to all elected members to sign on and support to pass the Brandon Act this year. There are plenty of studies and statistics that inform the decision to pass the Brandon Act. We do not need to lose another life. Thank you to Representative Moulton, Senator Kelly, Representative Miller Musk, and Representative Lesko, Representative Lesko for keeping hope alive this year. LULAC never stopped in the past. We will not stop today. And we will not stop tomorrow until we see the passage of the Brandon Act. And Terry and Patrick, thank you for your persistence, for making sure that all of our military members are protected. Together, we will rise. Thank you. Okay, thank you all very much. Appreciate it, and um, thank you to all my colleagues for participating today. Terry and Patrick, we wouldn't be here without you. Thank you.